Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This video is different from the other ones, in the sense that the other videos always featured single stories. But in this video, we'll cover two very short stories which revolve around the same idea. Now, these stories belong to the Meiji era. For all those who don't know, the Meiji era was an era of the Japanese history, uh, roughly from 1868 to 1912. This was like an industrial revolution in the Japanese history. It was called the Meiji era because Japan was ruled by Emperor Meiji, also known as Emperor Mutsuhito. Now this era marked the end of the Japanese system of feudalism. Now this Meiji era began when um, the daimyo lords from Satsuma and Choshu in the far south of Japan united to overthrow the Tokugawa Shogun. This returned the political power to the emperor and this revolution in Japan was called the Meiji Restoration. This information was given to you just so that you have a basic premise about the Meiji era. Since this is not a video on Japanese history, perhaps we can leave the details for some other time. Let's begin with the stories now. The first story is about a great Zen master who lived in the city of Kyoto. His name was Keichu. He was well respected in his area. When Kitagaki took over as governor of the city of Kyoto, he heard much about Keichu's wisdom. Deciding to pay his respects, Kitagaki called upon Keichu one evening. Upon reaching the cathedral, Kitagaki presented his business card to Keichu's attendant and asked for an audience with the Zen master. The attendant asked Kitagaki to wait and went inside to give the card to Keichu. So the attendant went inside and presented the card to the Zen master Keichu. He said, Master, there is someone here to see you. Keichu asked, Who is it? And to this, the attendant gave Keichu the governor's card. The Zen master saw the card and the card read Kitagaki, the governor of Kyoto. As soon as the Zen master saw the card, he shouted at the top of his voice, I have nothing to do with this fellow. Tell him to leave right away. So the attendant picked up the card and went outside where Kitagaki was waiting. My apologies, dear sir, he said. The Zen master does not wish to see you, he told the governor, remorsefully returning his card. The governor was startled. He took the card politely and started to leave. And as soon as he started walking, he realized his mistake. He looked at the attendant and said, I'm sorry, I had made a mistake. He sat down for a few seconds. He stood up again, gave the card once again and requested the attendant to take the card back in. He said, would you please be so kind enough to give your master this one more time? The attendant was now nervous but he still went on to return to the Zen master's chamber. He went inside and gave the governor's card once again. But this time, the card simply read Kitagaki. The governor had scratched out the words Governor of Kyoto from the card. Looking at this, the Zen master's eyes lit up. He gladly said, Oh, is it Kitagaki? Of course I'd like to see him. Please send him in. Please send him in. He told his attendant and that's how the governor of Kyoto got an audience with the great Zen master Keichu. Now this is the end of the first story. We'll go on to study the second story and then we'll discuss the meanings later on. Now the next story is also from the same period of 1868 to 1912 that is the Meiji era. And this story is about master Nanin and his meeting with a university professor one day. Master Nanin had a visitor. This visitor was a professor from a university and he had come to learn more about Zen. When he met the master, he appreciated the master and his works. He expressed his desire to learn more about Zen from Master Nanin. Hearing this, the master said, of course, why not? Let's discuss this more over a cup of tea. Till the time they walked inside for tea, the professor expressed his opinions regarding many things and he went on to talk about various topics. The Zen master keenly heard all of it by the time they reached inside. By the time they reached inside, the professor had discussed various other topics and discussed his achievements and speculations. The master prepared the tea and started serving. He poured his visitor's cup. However, he didn't stop. He kept on pouring. The professor watched the overflow until he no longer could restrain himself. He said loudly, What are you doing, master? Can't you see the cup is already full? No more can go into it. And as soon as he said, the master stopped pouring. He smiled and said, Like this cup, professor, you are also full of your own opinions and speculations. 
how can I show you Zen unless you first empty your own cup? All right, so this is the end of the second story. Now, what we observe in these two different stories is that these stories circulate around learning and becoming better students. In the first instance, when the governor wished to meet the Zen master, his card showed his title, his position, that is the governor of Kyoto. And this story symbolically tells us that if you wish to learn something, then you must get off your high horse. That is the only way to learn something. If you go inside a meeting, keeping in mind what you are, you forget how much there is yet to learn from someone. And this was the master's first lesson to the governor of Kyoto, that if you wish to learn something, then you must completely surrender to your teacher. Now this teacher can be anyone. It could be your 10 year old sibling. There's always something to learn from everything and everyone. Make sure you don't let your ego come before everything else. Now this story doesn't mean that you have to give away your dignity or your self-respect. It only means that you have to forget. A very simple example can be a CEO of a company. If he's always obsessed about the fact that he's a CEO, he'll never be able to learn from his subordinates, which is wrong. Because like we discussed earlier, there's something to learn from everything and everyone. Similarly, in the second story, the professor was busy giving his own opinions and speculations. He had preconceived notions about everything. When he came there, he was not in the perfect attitude to learn. In his mind, he was still a professor from some great university. And this bothered Master Nanin, who thought of teaching him a lesson. So, to become a better student, you must not only give up your ego, you must also clear your mind of all preconceived notions. And it is very logical to do so, because if the cup is full, how can you add more to it? It will naturally overflow. Now, there's also an interesting observation in the Bhagavad Gita, when in the first chapter, Arjun keeps telling Lord Krishna about his problems and his fear and his inability to fight his relatives. It is only in the last verse when Arjun gives up everything and sits down for advice that Lord Krishna starts speaking in the second chapter. So if you closely observe, this lesson is given even in the Bhagavad Gita when Arjun surrenders everything to learn and it's only then when Lord Krishna decides to teach him. So rounding up, we can say that to become a better student, one must surrender their ego and one must clear their minds of all preconceived notions and surrender to the teacher. All right, so I hope you like these stories and the meanings and I also hope that you try to apply these in your daily life. Do share this video with friends and family and keep watching out this space for more interesting videos. Thank you so much.